What's up, guys? Hey, if you haven't yet, check out the community tab. Got a lot of polls going on. Also, if you want to master the lore, don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification to become the ultimate lore master. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Siege of AR-558, so let's just get into it. The Siege of AR-558 is one of the only conflicts that involve troops on the ground in Trek that we have. While doing research on AR-558, it's interesting to consider the location itself. AR-558 was either an asteroid or a planet in the Chintaka system. While people talk about and celebrate the episode where the Federation successfully invades the Chintaka system itself, what many forget is that the Chintaka system was never considered safe and never solidly under the control of the Alpha or Beta Quadrant powers. Klingons, Romulans, and even Starfleet were constantly under attack, having to resupply and reinforce the system on a daily basis. It was taking a lot of effort and resources to simply hold Chintaka, and this is emphasized on AR-558. Again, a planet or asteroid that was considered so useless, they hadn't even given it a proper name. In 2374, Starfleet and her allies would successfully take the Chintaka system. Once Starfleet forces gained control of AR-558, they realized there was a Dominion subspace communications hub on it. With this hub, Starfleet might be able to tap into Dominion communications and have an edge against Dominion forces. Realizing this potential breach into their network, Dominion forces constantly attacked AR-558, making it one of the most dangerous areas in the Chintaka system. In 2375, shortly before the loss of Chintaka to a Breen Dominion alliance, the garrison would barely be holding on as Federation engineers continued to work tirelessly on the subspace communications hub. AR-558 was so volatile that the space around it would change hands between Dominion and Starfleet forces all the time. It made resupplying AR-558 almost an impossibility. As the Dominion continued its attempts to retake AR-558, they would be able to transport down at least two columns of Jim Hadar that would relentlessly attack the garrison. There would only be 147 Starfleet officers defending the communication hub at the garrison itself. The continued attacks would result in the death of at least 104 soldiers, almost two-thirds of their unit wiped out. When officers from the USS Defiant transported down to the area where the garrison was, the forces of AR-558 began firing on them. Lieutenant Larkin, commander of the garrison, quickly realized they were firing on Starfleet officers and ordered her men to stop. The personnel of the USS Defiant began to assist with medical emergencies and providing supplies. Both the captain and XO of AR-558 had been killed, and possibly even more senior officers were killed until Lieutenant Larkin would ultimately be the one in command. The soldiers of AR-558 were on the edge, yelling at each other, insubordinate, even to the captain of the Defiant. Starfleet regulations required that soldiers fighting on the front line be rotated out every 30 days. Cisco arrived on roughly day 150 of their tour and there was no end in sight for them. While continuing resupply operations, the Defiant would come under attack, and Commander Worf would advise Sisko that they would need to transport now to get off AR-558. Benjamin and Sisko ordered the Defiant to take evasive action. Worf warned him that he didn't know when they would be able to return, and Sisko reiterated that the Defiant was to retreat. The five members of the Defiant crew left on AR-558 would reinforce the garrison. This would make Sisko the highest ranking officer on AR-558, and when asked for his orders, he only had one. Hold. The Starfleet garrison had multiple issues to contend with. The Dominion had left behind anti-personnel mines that were able to slip in and out of subspace, making them impossible to find. The mines would sit in subspace until they were ready to come out, randomly appear, and kill whomever was in their way. More Jem'Hadar reinforcements were being transported onto AR-558 every day, and worse, they didn't know where their base was. Both of these issues would need to be remedied, of course, for the garrison to continue to operate effectively. Lieutenant Larkin would be instrumental in assisting Captain Sisko in providing both information and operations. While it's outside the scope of this battle breakdown, it's worth noting Quark's opinion on humans. I wish I could really play it here, but won't be able to. He discusses how humans are great people, as long as they have their creature comforts, that humans can be the best of humanity, but if you remove their creature comforts, put them in danger, torture them, they can be the most dangerous in the galaxy. I will be doing a separate video in the future discussing this, but needless to say, whether you agree or disagree, it's something worthy of conversation. While assessing the relative strength of their enemy and trying to determine what can be done to defend the subspace communications relay, the Starfleet garrison would come under attack by Jim Hadar's soldiers. However, ultimately this would be determined to be a trick as the Dominion had utilized holographic technology. They made it look like they were attacking, 
when they weren't. The trick worked. It had given away the positions of Starfleet personnel, had given away how many people they had, and wasted Federation ammunition. Things continued to get worse and worse. In order to determine what the enemy forces were fielding, Sisko ordered a recon of the area. Neither side could utilize scanners due to jamming technology, so he sent out a team of three, including Nog, a Ferengi, that could utilize his ears to find and identify the threat they were up against. Nog, Lieutenant Larkin, and Reese would be able to determine where the Jem'Hadar are and their position. Unfortunately, the team would be ambushed. Lieutenant Larkin would be killed and Nog would lose his leg. But these losses would be worth it. The Starfleet officers would be able to identify over two columns of Jem'Hadar and their exact location. They now knew where the enemy was, how many, and how they would be attacking the garrison. The subspace mines, also known as Houdinis, would be another problem. Ultimately, engineers would be able to rig their equipment to break through the jamming technology and identify the subspace mines. So now the garrison knew where the Dominion mines were, they knew where the enemy base camp was, and how many soldiers were stationed there. Lieutenant Larkin was dead, and now they had Nog who would be out of the battle and would ultimately lose his leg. Interestingly enough, everything up to now was a prelude to the battle that would decide who kept AR-558. Which, if you can believe it, has so much to break down that I'll be putting it into a part two. However, it's safe to assume that we'll have much more death, more tragedy, and ultimately even the garrison would be overrun. Stay tuned next week when we break down the rest of the battle. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.